As we complete the first year of reporting of gender pay gap, I think we've all learnt a huge amount. I think for many organisations, the difference in pay has surprised them because I think in many organisations we have been trying to make progress on these issues. But the evidence is showing we still have an awful lot of work to do. Um, so the first thing is, is what is that evidence and what do we understand by it and what actions are we going to take to improve it so that as we look forwards over the coming years we can genuinely see progress. This is a huge opportunity for HR therefore to lead that debate, to see that, that we've got good evidence now, this is what we're going to do about it, work with the whole business and make this a business and collective uh, intention to improve. So that's, I think, how we see it fundamentally. And we must make sure we're not seeing this as a compliance exercise or something where numbers have got to be hidden or massaged. The numbers are the numbers. It's really about what we understand about them and the narrative that we're creating from them. So what's the data telling us? Uh, at one level, I think for most organizations, they are able to say that they're pay equality, in other words, what men and women are paid for the same job, is broadly okay, although there are some things we definitely still need to fix. What for most it has clearly highlighted is the gender mix. Where are women and men working in different roles, different parts of the organization, which receive different levels of reward? And of course, the obvious ones are where you have a far higher proportion of men in senior positions versus women in more junior positions. There are many things that we can now work on to really close the gender pay gap and improve more inclusive ways of working across our organizations. A lot, a lot of talk is about culture and mindset and societal norms. and There are many things of that nature which we clearly need to work on and understand. And we need to reaffirm to our organizations our belief in the principles of inclusion and fairness for all. But there are very practical things that we can do as well. First of all, we need to look at our processes. Are our processes really unbiased and supportive of women as much as they are of men? And for example, around recruitment. And there's a lot of evidence to show now that uh, unintentionally many of the words and ways which we describe jobs can be excluding of women or make them think that the job is much more male-oriented or reinforce male stereotypes in terms of the sector in which they are working. We also know through recruitment, that's the first place where we lose sight of a very important part of, of inclusive work organizations, which is flexible working. We know from organizations like TimeWise that less than 10% of all jobs are advertised with any mention of whether people could work flexibly. So it starts with recruitment, and then it comes into things like induction and training, and how we reinforce all of the values that we have in our organizations about respect for the individual and supporting each other and all these sorts of ideas. We've got to train line managers much more. They've got to understand better where they may have biases around how they think of or treat women and the mindsets around them. We've got to encourage more sponsorship of women in organizations, and it's making clear the distinction between mentoring and sponsorship. We know, and to use a, a generalization, that many men will put themselves forward for roles when they're not ready, and conversely, many women will not put themselves forward because they don't think they're ready when they are. And that requires sponsorship as much as it requires things like mentorship and coaching. I profoundly believe this is a time for leaders to step up. There are, I think there are many things about the world of work where business needs to be much more on the front foot and demonstrating that it really can make progress. And this is a really core cool one. So first of all, what is the tone from the top? What are leaders saying about gender pay gap? Are they f trying to hide from an uncomfortable truth about what's really happening in their organization? Or are they being open and honest about it, sharing the information with their organization and talking about their commitment to improve it and the ways in which they're going to do that? So this is very much a time for leadership. And of course, HR is part of that leadership as well. We need to be integral to that discussion. We need to be encouraging business leaders, if they are being a bit fearful, um, to, to be honest and open about this. There is a danger, of course, with a lot of the debates now that, that people are saying, oh, well, I need to be a bit careful about what I say. This is a time for openness and honesty and transparency. It is a time for organizations to own the narrative, to own their story, and not to feel that they've got to hide numbers which are then going to be you know, uh, taken apart in the court of public opinion. So in the end, 
culture, of course, is also driven by leadership. So we need leaders to stand up and we as HR professionals need to support them in that dialogue. Thank you.